Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's weekly production diary. This week we're going to kind of feature a certain aspect of mandolin building that you don't really talk about very much and that's just shipping these instruments. Uh, as if you've been following the, uh, the series you know that I'm going to ship two mandolins this week to California so I thought well let's just take all of the steps that I take, I'll explain everything and the reasons why uh, that I take to pack a mandolin up and get it shipped and how to go about that in case you ever have to ship your mandolin. Uh, say you want to ship it to somebody to have it fixed or you sell it to somebody across country. How do you go about shipping your mandolin? And so I thought I'd share all the tips and tricks about how to do that in this week's episode. So let's start at the very top, which would be the box. Now, before we actually discuss the box, let's discuss uh, briefly the recommended procedures from most of the shippers. They recommend that you have at least two inches of padding or packing around the instrument itself. And so, although that's a sort of a loose rule, most of us try to to obtain a box that pretty much works and gives you two inches of packing all the way around that instrument. Now, how are you going to get a box? Well, I use these boxes like this. I buy these boxes from a place called Uline. They're on the internet, U-L-I-N-E dot com, I think. And, uh, and these boxes for shipping mandolins, their dimensions are 36, by 18 by 6 and it seems to be just about perfect for a mandolin box but if you if you don't have access to ready-made packing materials like that probably the best place for you to go would be your local music store uh, they're getting instruments in all the time and they have some spare boxes left over now I will tell you that I talked to a couple of music store owners in the last little bit and music uh, instrument manufacturers, some of them are now requiring like a deposit charge on these cases or these boxes. If I understand correctly, uh, the music stores kind of gather the boxes all from one manufacturer and ship them back to that manufacturer uh, and get sort of a refund or a deposit on the boxes some way or another. So the boxes, the, when the manufacturer, if I understand it correctly, when the manufacturer ships to your local music store, he'll of course charge the music store for the instrument itself for the shipping charges and then there'll be a deposit charge on the box as well. So the, your local music store might be a little reluctant to let go of that box and just give it to you for free and you may have to pay for it, but still, that's the best place to get an appropriate sized box to ship a musical instrument. And if you're going to ship a mandolin um, and you get, say, a guitar box or a banjo box, which is, is longer. Now, the shippers are going to charge you a dimensional weight, and that means that they're going to weigh your instrument, but they're also going to measure the package length and width and depth. And if it's over, all those numbers add up to be over a certain number, then they're going to charge you extra for that. So you don't want to take a guitar box that's this long and to ship a mandolin that's this long. So you'll get that guitar box and then with the knife or box cutter or whatever, cut the size down so that it's more appropriately sized for that mandolin that you're shipping and still have two inches worth of packing. And so that's how to do that. So, and boxes are two different kinds. You can either load them from the end, you know, they're long and the openings are from the end, or like this, these boxes here. You load from the top. Some of them you load from the end here and some of them from the top, but either way will be fine. These are a little easier to get the packing in, but you can do fine 
with the other kind. So, so that takes care of, I think, about everything you need to know about the boxes. Well, maybe not everything. Let's talk about tape just for a second. Buy good quality tape if you can, because uh, lots of times those cheap tapes that you get at the cheap stores um, will just come untaped, and and then you've got your mandolin being shipped with a flap going on or open or whatever. So I always try to get at least decent tape. Uh, the truck drivers for the carriers, they have a roll of tape in there and they're supposed to tape things back together when they notice that it's come untaped. But those guys are awful busy nowadays. So I always just try to go ahead and splurge and get some decent tape. And I will mention that I have those guns with the handle, the tape guns, and the and these roller things that the tape is supposed to fit in with the cut off part and all that fancy stuff. And quite frankly, I find them more aggravating to use than they're worth. So I don't use them. I just use a knife, a razor knife, but you can use a pocket knife or anything, and just roll a roll of the tape, and then I'll cut it and put. A huge piece of tape right there on the end so that I don't lose the end and that's how I do it it's those like I said those machines are just more trouble than they're worth so we're going to prepare this box to put the mandolin in and the best way to start is to any place where you're going to have a seam where two things come together put a piece of tape over it so do this my knife, come over here and do it on the other end, cut it, cut that, and then I can, I can always find the end of the tape, but we're going to also, like I said, anywhere where there's a, a seam where two pieces of cardboard come together, These inner flaps here, I know it's kind of silly of me, but they've always bothered me just being loose like that. So I will do one of two things. I will either take them shut like that, or if I've got a big piece of cardboard, I will just put another piece of cardboard down there to make sort of a floor for that mandolin to rest on and it, that this way gives it a little extra padding so uh, but i'll do it either way depending on whether i have a big chunk of cardboard like this or not so i have the box now ready to put the mandolin in it's time to set the box aside and get the mandolin itself ready Now I have the mandolin here. Last week you heard me play a song on it. This is uh, mandolin number eight, I think, that became mandolin 1260. So let's discuss the most common damages that occur to an instrument in shipping, uh, other than things like just being run over by a truck or crushed in a forklift or something like that that you can't really predict or help the uh, with the chances of that mandolin surviving that. The thing that happens most appears to be what is uh, this mandolin will break right in here. This is a weak spot on just about every instrument and if the box is upright and the whole box falls over this way so that the mandolin falls this way then when it hits pow it snaps its pig head off and it happens on such a regular basis that it actually has a name. It's called a whiplash break. 
pow, and just breaks this pig head off. So what all can we do to keep that from happening? And of course, the number one thing is that the, if you ship it with the tension on the strings, then it's already got a lot of tension in this area and that whiplash uh, has uh, to exert less force to break this peg head off. So we want to take off the tension off of the strings. Now, another thing that happens to instruments when you're shipping them is things get loose in the case and it's it's maybe not structurally damaging, but it can sure tear an instrument all to pieces is things rattling around in the case. So, let me go ahead and get the tension off of these strings. Now I'm not going to take all of the tension off. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Because of the things rattling around in the case, there's really only two things that come from the mandolin that can rattle around in the case. Number one is the bridge. So if you loosen these strings so much, the bridge comes loose in the in the hustle and bustle and ju being jumbled around of the shipping process, and that bridge will just go around and scratch the top of the mandolin, as will uh, the tailpiece cover. So I always take the tailpiece cover off of the mandolin and wrap it in newspaper or wrap it in something and put it down in the case pocket make sure the case pocket is closed and, and uh, this thing has no possibility of escaping out because that thing will scratch a mandolin all two pieces if it comes loose in the shipping process. Now these two mandolins that we're going to ship this week have James tail pieces on them and those things of course can't come loose but uh, but just your regular traditional tailpiece cover can come apart and scratch a mandolin all to pieces as will the bridge so let's get back to that bridge i will take the tension off the strings enough so that i'm i'm safe that i or i feel good that i have taken a lot of the risk out of getting a whiplash break but i still put enough tension on the strings to to, to keep the bridge in place so so I'm pretty comfortable that it's not going to get wander around uh, in the, uh, like I said, the hustle and bustle of being shipped. Now, uh, and also in addition to uh, the things that I've already done, I usually take a piece of cardboard that's kind of shaped with a little round on the top. I'll lay it right here, and then I'll take some newspaper or something and kind of pad right in here and shut the case so that... Um, it's got at least some more help to keep that thing from uh, receiving a whiplash break. And once I've done that, then I close everything up, I'm done. I have the paperwork, I've got some stuff from the cases and the, the Karen feeding booklet from me and the warranty card and three or four other different things that I put in the case. I usually pack those separate and pack them right here. And we'll, I'll show you that here in a few minutes as well. But the mandolin has been detuned and the tailpiece cover has been taken care of. And we've done all we can do to keep from a whiplash break right here. Now this mandolin is ready to go in the box. Now another thing that I do is I will take and just put a separate piece of paper given the customer's address ship to this customer either in the case or uh, I have new cases and they have these plastic bags and sometimes I'll put them in the bag so that's here just in case the regular shipping label gets ripped off uh, then the shipper that you use has no idea who to send this to and they'll open the box up and if there's a piece of paper in there that says hey you're supposed to ship this to so and so then hopefully that will take care of that issue just in case the ship regular shipping label label gets lost somewhere in transit and like i said i have these clear plastic bags that the cases come to me in
and that piece of paper that we were talking about can either go in the case or right here so that it's readily visible to anybody that might open that box up. So now it's ready to put the mandolin in the box. I have a care package, the paperwork for the mandolin. I usually send the, the anything that came like the tuner card and the box for the uh, James tail piece and all that kind of stuff. Anything that those customer might feel is uh, important or interesting, I usually put just like that right there and arrange everything the way I want it. And now it's time to put the packing in around it. You can use any number of things. I use newspaper and uh, uh, styrofoam chunks, um, pieces of cardboard, some of these bags like, like that right there that you get at the grocery store. Wad those things up and put them in here. Sometimes you get packages, let's say in a small cardboard box, I'll put padding inside those boxes. And and if they'll fit in the, in the big box, I use that, and that keeps the mandolin from sliding around. But for the purpose of this video, I have saved up uh, some nice brown wrapping paper, so it'll be nice and pretty. We're just going to wrap this entire mandolin with this brown paper. I usually start here, get these more or less where I want it, and then I'll pin the ends in. That does the most of the job right there, and the rest of it's just packing. Now this mandolin is pushing from shock pretty much, and if I have a nice piece of cardboard, I'll lay that on top, and it is ready to fold up. Tape up and be on its way. But before we tape it up and put the tags and the labels and stuff on it, let me back up and show you that I, when I pack one up, I'm very aware of its position in the box. Because, if you'll recall, I mentioned earlier that whiplash break. And this goes back to where we're going to put the shipping label itself. If we put the shipping label on this end of the box that, that has the peg head in it, then when that delivery driver wants to read that label to see where he's sending it to, he'll stand the box up like this right here, right? Read the label. If at this point this mandolin falls over, 
and it's going to get that whiplash break. So when it's in the box, I put the label. This is a package, a, a plastic pouch that you put the label in. I put the label on the bo uh, on the body end of wherever this mandolin's packed in this pack in this box, so that when that delivery driver stands that thing up, sets it on the floor to read the label, who he's going to send it to. It's like this. He reads the label up here. Then he turns around and it starts to fall. It doesn't have a whiplash break at this point. The whiplash break comes when the neck hits like that right there. And here, it's not going to do that. So this is a terribly unsafe and dangerous fall for a mandolin or any other musical instrument, by the way. Bang, like that. In that or even, uh, I've, I've also fixed it over the course of my career many times when people lean them up against a wall or lean them up against a chair and they fall. Inevitably, they lean them up, of course, this way, not this way. And so that's how you get a lot of whiplash breaks. If you're a luthier or an instrument repairman, you're going to see instruments with the peg head broke off, mainly because people either don't lay them flat, they sit them up like this, or they get hurt in shipping or something. So always put the label, my point is, to always put the label, the shipping label, on this end of the instrument, not this end. To that end, for every mandolin I pack, I always stand on this side of the box. I know the handle is here. Butt end is this way. Peg head end is that way. And before I, and when I tape it up, then that kind of goes away. I don't know what it is. So if I don't have those pouches right here so that I can immediately put them on. I'll take an X, mark on this right here's where I want this pouch to go because I know that that's on the end of this part of the mandolin. So that is something else for you to be very, very aware of. One of the most important things for you to be aware of when you pack a mandolin and ship it somewhere or any other musical instrument is where do I put that shipping label so that that reduces the risk of damage to this instrument in transit. So I'm ready to take this thing up. I'm going to tape it. I'm going to put the shipping label right here. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step, which is arranging for a pickup. And I'll discuss that in just a moment. Okay, so now you have the mandolin all packed up. We want to talk a little bit about what to do now to actually get it out of here. There are three major shippers, UPS, FedEx, and the United States Postal Service. 
will handle the, this probably the three best choices that you have for this in the United States anyway. Um, I have the, those little plastic pouches and uh, an account with FedEx and so I usually arrange for a pickup on the internet and they come here to the front door and pick it up and take it away. Uh, all of those places, those post office obviously of course, FedEx and UPS usually have their drop-off places or a uh, uh, some place where you can you can just take your package and go to them and say okay I need this to go to ABC one two three safety lane you know any town USA and they will take care of it or quite often you can get on the internet and get a phone number call them in and say I'm a one-time pickup or whatever the terms is that they're they use a one-time pickup and I'm speaking specifically now of UPS and FedEx uh, but uh, I'm a, I need you to come to my house, here's the address, and pick this package up, and they will uh, probably take it on a credit card. I, I just pay a bill once a month or once whenever I ship stuff out. And of course, with the post office, you just go to the post office and, and pop it up on the counter and say, hey, send this to this place, and they, they do. Now, the post office is uh, a good way to go, uh, they are quite often the cheapest and the best way to go overseas uh, is the U.S. mail, and they will insure them for as much as you want to insure them for. Um, between UPS and FedEx, I just I use FedEx mainly because I have a FedEx account, but occasionally I will find that they are, uh, if I do a comparison, they're usually a, a tad cheaper than UPS depending on where you're going. It's usually not a, it's a negligible amount, but still it's usually a dollar or two cheaper than, than UPS. So uh, if, that'll, if that'll help you any at all. And that's about all I know to tell you. you uh, once you've got the mandolin packed up, you either, you either get it to them or make them come to you to pick it up. And uh, then it's out of your hand, insure it heavily um, I usually try to insure for three or four or five hundred dollars more than it's worth uh, just simply in case somebody wants to haggle you down if there is a claim. Um, I've not, I, I, I've packed the way I pack for the, ever basically. Uh, I haven't had anything broken in the last 20 or 25 years. Uh, I think a lot of it's got to do with the fact that I, although I pack it the same, I'm, I'm real careful about where I put the label, like I was telling you on the butt end of the instrument. I think that has made more difference than anything else is for me to not have had anything hurt in a long time, a long time. I've not had any kind of insurance claim or anything, but I still buy a lot of insurance on these things just in case. And I think that pretty much covers up uh, if there's any more questions, if you have any more questions of, of anything that I didn't cover uh, about packing and shipping a mandolin, um, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to, to do my best to either answer it in the comment section or in a future video. Uh, it's still pretty early in the week and uh, we've got these two mandolins, which is 9 and 10, that they're more or less ready to put strings on and then I've got these uh, two extras here that we're going to put finish on this week. So I don't know what, if we make any more video uh, this week, I don't really know which job we're going to be taking care of, but I am, I'm, I've got to, right now I've got to pack up mandolin number seven. You, you watch me pack up mandolin number eight. I'll pack up number seven and uh, then we'll go from there. Boy, time flies. I just turn around and suddenly it's Friday evening. Uh, in addition to getting those two mandolins shipped out this week, I got finish on one of the extras and all of the bill codes. So this is uh, mandolin number one of the extras that we have. And 
I got strings on mandolin number nine in the batch. If you'll remember, it's the one that had the really dark sunburst, kind of pretty mandolin. And uh, I got strings put on it, all the hardware put on it. Don't have the end pin button on it, and I haven't engraved the mandolin's tail piece. And I don't have the tags and all that stuff in it yet, but at least I do have strings on it. Uh, let's see, let's play you a tune. Um, next week for the next episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary. See you then.